So let's move on to game number three because here's my outsiders for the tournament. It's uh, Portugal versus Ghana. Portugal for me, uh, yes, obviously they've got all the hoorah about uh, Ronaldo, but they've also got a ton of experience, a ton of quality, and they know how to get it done in a tournament. And they're minus 275. We've Ghana at plus 875. The draw is at plus 370. The goal line is at two and a half, which... Surprises me a bit because you can get plus money for there to be three goals in this game. But Portugal are minus 155 to score twice. Roman, it's one of those where Portugal and Spain in the same tournament. But the Portuguese have got plenty, plenty in reserve. Yeah, I mean, the Portuguese probably have uh, maybe even the best uh, squad, I'd say, in, in this competition. Or one of the best. I mean, the quality is there. Uh, undoubtedly, they have a lot of talent, but there's a big contrast in terms of the manager they have, which plays a very different football, to, at least personally, I think, to what they should be playing, because they have a lot of offensive prowess. There are a lot of players that can go forward. But then Fernando Santos is known for being a more cautious manager, more, quite defensive, uh, looking for those counterattacks. So I think the full potential isn't being exploited by him uh, for Portugal. But, I mean, Fernando Santos is a very experienced manager. He's won uh, Euro Cups. He's won all sorts of competitions. So, I mean, in, at international level, he really knows what he's doing. So definitely there, there are candidates. I mean, uh, I'm not sure, so sure if underdogs, but, you know, I mean, they have one of the best squads, as I said before. They have a lot of quality. And against Ghana, they should get a win. Uh, I mean, uh, they, have, they need to get a good start, but I'm just worried they might have a similar slow start to Spain, you know, because sometimes they tend to struggle in certain games. Although, I mean, I don't expect Ghana to, to be maybe as, as strong as they were in previous World Cups. They've lost a bit of, of potential in terms of their squad, but they still have a good team. They still qualified and did pretty well. So, I mean, I think it'll be an interesting match. But again, I don't see uh, another thrashing like we've been seeing with England and Iran or, or something, anything like that. You know, I think it'll be a tighter result, but... At the end of the day, Portugal uh, should get a win. Yeah, they should do. They've got too much quality in that final third, Brad. Um, and they're all playing Champions League football. And this is not this Ghana side are not on paper anyway, when obviously they don't play on paper, but they're not as good as like the Cameroon or the Senegal. Yeah, I agree. I was, um, you know, it's always fun to try to beat the beat the betters and get the very good lines early um, in the World Cup. And I was actually kind of disappointed in myself that I took Ghana to advance before I uh, find, saw this final World Cup uh, lineup. I was expecting both, to get both Williams brothers, which we, we didn't happen. We got the lesser of the two. They're both pretty good football players. But I don't think they're going to offer too much in this game. You know, they, they, they have a bunch of players who can, you know, go out there, not get not get – just throttle three four zero. They're going to hold their own. Like if you if you think about this team, they're going to be aggressive. They're going to go for broke all game because that's what they're going to want to do. But in defense, they're still pretty stout. And then on Portugal side, they just don't play the style of football that blows teams out. So for me, what I wanted to do was I wanted to figure out a way where I could kind of get best of both worlds. If this game ends as a as a two zero result then I could still get a plus money play in there and I could still get uh, another full unit that's a little safer just in case the Black Stars actually score a goal. So I took Portugal minus one and a half. That's plus 115. And I also took Portugal to win in under three and a half goals. It, you know, tactically, they're just not the team that's going to continue to, to pound you down, it, it, especially not early in group play. They're going to go out there. They're going to get the result and they're going to tidy things up and just chill once they're once they're up one or two. I just love the feel-good factor about Portuguese football at the moment. We know that Porto, Benfica, Sporting Lisbon, oh all God. going great guns. And they're playing a brand of football that is just so easy on the eye. I've actually gone for Portugal just to control this game uh, and do exactly what they need to do, which is get a W, get, a fr get the three points and move on. But every team who plays Ghana will be going in as favourites. I don't see Ghana being favourites against Portugal, against South Korea or against Uruguay. So Portugal must get the win. So then you have to look, yep. how are we going to get the value? Do you think they win by two clear goals? Then you go with the minus one and a half at plus one, one, five. For me, I've gone with Portugal to win and under three and a half. I think worst case scenario, 2-0, uh, 3-0, maybe even a 2-1. I cannot see Ghana scoring. But that's why you're going to get minus 135 for Ghana not to score. Let's have a little look at the official picks. 
So Brad's double dipped here. I know that. He's gone with Portugal minus one and a half at plus 115 for me. It's Portugal and under three and a half at minus 120. Uh, Ghana team total over. Oh, Roman, you fancy Ghana score. <laughs> wow. So that means that I'm hoping for a 2-1. It's a risky one. bet, but I mean... It is risky. Let's hope it loses. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. I'm saying uh, it's a bit of a risky bet, to be fair. But I think uh, Inaki Williams with his pace and the, the veteran centre-backs... Uh, Portugal has. I think he could maybe exploit that a bit and, and find a goal, hopefully. Yeah, I looked at that, and for, just to put a pin in your balloon a little bit more, because I hope you lose, is that I think that the Portuguese will defend on the edge of their own box, so there'll be no space for Inaki Williams to Could exploit. Be. And the thing is, with Inaki Williams, if you don't give him space, he'll kick it into the crowd. I mean, his first <laughs> touch, it's yeah. like he's got a trampette down his sock. <laughs> so for me, I'm more than happy to have him in tight areas. Uh, let's have a little look at Brad's other, because Brad's gone for two bets in this game. Portugal and under three and a half at minus 120. I think he copied me. I think he actually <laughs> did. You can own up, Brad. You can smile. You can own up because uh, uh, you're, uh, you're amongst good company.